What's up guys, this is Mike the Detroit Borg with a look at the new Barnes & Noble Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light. Essentially a backlit version of the Nook Simple Touch we're all familiar with. So this is still available in the Barnes & Noble store for $100, but you can get this one for $139. Now this is actually quite an innovation in the realm of e-ink readers because, as you know, e-ink requires an external light source in order to be read. It doesn't provide its own internal light source, which means it requires good lighting conditions in order to be read read comfortably. So you either have excellent outdoor lighting or indoor lighting, but if you can't control that situation, so for example if you're in bed and you don't have an overhead light source, you can instead provide your own light source, either in terms of a clip-on light or if you're Amazon, they sell a case for the Nook, or I'm sorry, Kindle Touch, which has a uh, built-in light source. But of course that's not very, this, well this adds a lot of bulk and it's not very, it's not a very even light source. So what Barnes & Noble aims to do is to improve that situation by adding a backlit source uh, which, uh, it, which you can turn on and off and you can dim. So it's an interesting solution for a problem that all e-ink e displays have and I think this actually makes it probably the most compelling e-ink device you can buy right now. So let's go ahead and crack into this and see what we get in the box. All right, so we're just going to twist this to open the lid, and there is our Nook Simple Touch. Down here we have our compartment with our USB wall adapter, so you can plug this into the wall to charge it, or you can connect this to a computer to charge it. So we have our micro USB cable here, and this, of course, is a standard USB to micro USB. There is our connector. Here is the Nook Simple Touch, and the first thing I notice here is it has that gray bezel, which is unique to the uh, to the one with the glow light. The standard Nook Simple Touch has a black bezel, but if you have the the Nook Simple Touch limited edition, you have a white bezel. They sold this briefly during the holidays, and of course we have a quick start guide which shows us how to use it. Of course, they want us to charge it first. Uh, we're going to take a look around to show you how this works. Now taking a close look at the hardware, very little has changed here. We still have our 6-inch e-ink display with a resolution of 600 by 800. We still have the same overall body design. Nothing has changed here. The dimensions are the same. Uh, on the side, we have this nice grippable bezel. Plenty of room for your fingers to hold onto the device without accidentally touching the touch-sensitive display. So of course you can change or you can turn pages with e with uh, by touching the page or swiping the page or you can use these physical page turn buttons which are built into the bezel. We still have our physical home button here. On the top we have our Nook logo. On the back we have our nice big power button. On the back we also have this nice grippable texture with this sort of concave bezel which allows us to grip onto this nice and comfortably. On the top we have these friction fittings for holding the back panel on. It's not removable uh, but you do have these uh, friction fittings here. They're not functional. They're not speakers or anything. We have our micro USB connector for charging or adding uh, additional data to the internal memory. We also have our LED light, which indicates charge status. So when you're connecting this, it's either amber when it's charging or green when it's fully charged. Now on your right side, you have your micro SD card slot, which allows you to expand storage up to 32 gigs. This has 2 gigs of internal storage, which holds plenty of books. Now the new Nook Simple Touch also has an anti-reflective coating on the screen. Uh, so if you compare it to the existing Nook Simple Touch, you can see it does a little better job managing glare. So it does work pretty well. Now in terms of touch technology, this is not a resistive or capacitive touch screen. This uses infrared. So along the bezel is an infrared array, which basically triangulates the position of your finger uh, when you're touching the screen. So that's why this bezel is a little raised above the surface of the screen. All right, let's go ahead and power this on for the first time. I'm just going to press the power button on the back. All right, so welcome to your Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light. Let's click Next. We're going to agree to our 174 page license agreement. I am in Eastern Time. Next. And now we're looking for uh, time, or we're looking for our Wi Fi connection. So I'm going to choose Time Capsule here and enter in my passcode. All right, so I've entered my password in, and now I can connect to my router. And we're going to continue with setup. So now it's registering my device. 
and now it wants me to log into my Barnes & Noble account. So let me go ahead and do that off screen. Alrighty, so logging into my account brings up my existing purchases in the library as well as my highlights, my bookmarks where I last left off, that sort of thing. Uh, now with Glowlight, you have several options here. You can access it either by tapping the home button and you now have a glow light button right here and this gives you a little slider here so you can slide it left and right to change the intensity now when I first booted up the device it was very low it's about the minimum setting and of course you can turn it off or on and of course you can also hold the home button to turn it off or on and you can also adjust your settings from the drop down up here so if you tap there you get your quick settings, so you can turn Wi-Fi on and off to conserve battery life, so it's a nice quick way of accessing that, or you can slide your glow light. So either way, you have very quick access to the glow light control. Now with the lights turned down, we can take a look at the quality of the backlighting. You can see it does look pretty even across the entire display, with a notable exception of up top. You can see the origin of the LEDs, which is a little splotchy, but for the body of the text, it does look pretty even. It looks very nice. So if we jump to a book, Let's just go to our book here. You can see a little. there's a little light bleed, more of a light bleed toward the top than toward the uh, uh, bulk of the page. So it looks pretty good otherwise. Certainly a big improvement over the alternative, which is an overhead light like this Kindle here. So you can see, again, it's not very even. So it casts more shadows. It's better lit at the top than the bottom. Uh, and uh, the only uh, problem here with a uh, backlit like this is the fact that the text does lose some of its contrast, so it's not quite as dark as uh, the text would otherwise look with an overhead light. Now briefly taking a look at the user interface on the Nook Simple Touch, you can see on the home screen we have what we're reading now, including the page we last left off at. We have our new reads or things that are in our library, so we can tap that to bring us right to the library. And then we have suggestions from Barnes & Noble, which will essentially take us to the Nook store. Up top we have our book icon in the upper left corner that will take you right to where you last left off on your book. So that is uh, Steve Jobs, that's page 19. Now if we want to get back to the home screen, just tap the home button, that will take you back, or give you the home icon, and that will take you back home. So again, tap that home button, uh, so you can either go home, you can go to your library, so here you can load any of your books that you've previously downloaded, or you can scroll through them, depends on how many you have. You also have shop, so it will take you right to the Barnes & Noble Nook store, uh, so you can shop by books, magazines, newspapers, or see all. You can also go by popular lists, New York Times bestsellers, top 100 new releases. You also see some ads on here for new books. And you can either search or browse. So if you search, search by Apple. Oh, Apple, there we go. So there you go, it searches by Apple in the title. So let's go to search. Now search allows you to search for things uh, either on your device or in the Nook store. So again, if we search Apple, which I've done previously already, as you can see, search. So search is my library, found one title that matched Apple, and we have 1,520 matches in the store. So let's go ahead and jump back to settings. So here you have your settings, and including another way to get to your glow light settings. So we're familiar with that device info so this tells me my battery charge status how much storage I have available which is a hundred percent right now you also have your wireless information here so if you need to change your wireless or log off now under screen you can change the uh, screen timeout so here you can change it from two minutes five minutes one hour you can also adjust your screen saver so you have authors or nature so let's just choose nature you can also change the configurations of the buttons under reader. So you can either choose whether your uh, top buttons are the forward buttons or the bottom buttons are the forward buttons. So I'm going to keep it on default. You can also go to shop and here you can identify whether you want this to require a password before purchases are made. So this prevents people from making purchases on your account automatically. You can also manage your credit card. Now under social, you can manage your connectivity to social networks such as Facebook, Twitter, and Google. You can also add contacts and you can manage your Nook friends. Uh, Nook has its own social networking system for uh, Nook owners so that you can basically share books with Nook friends. So that's kind of a nice feature. And you also have search. So this is where you can clear your recent Nook searches. And it uh, helps to save your privacy. 
So there you go, that's your settings. Now let's go ahead and jump to our book and we can start reading. So here we have several options. If you press the home button when you're reading the book, again, you have your options to go back to the home screen or your settings. But if you tap the center of the screen, you get a different bar. So here we can jump to our contents. So here we can uh, see our notes and highlights, our bookmarks, our chapters. And we can scroll through it using our finger. If we just tap one of these chapters, it brings us right to it. We can also swipe through our pages. And you can see we can actually swipe pretty fast. You can also use the physical buttons on the side. Now you can also go to find, so here you can search for text. So for example, I've already typed in Apple, so let's search for that. It takes us to a list of pages with the word Apple, and of course there are many of them. And we can scroll through that. And if we don't want that, we can just close that out and go back to our text. Now if we tap the screen again, we can go to, and this will allow us to scrub to different pages of the book, basically like scrubbing a movie or a song. So it takes a little while to catch up there, but you see, you get the idea. So you can scrub to an exact page number. And you can also change your text. Uh, so here you can change your font size. So you can go from really small to really big. You can also change your line spacing here from small, medium, to large. You can also change your margins. So we can have small margins, medium, or large. Or you can go ahead and select the publisher defaults and bounce it back to the default view. You can also change your fonts here. So let's go to Helvetica. So there you go. Now if you want to bookmark this page, all you have to do is tap the bookmark icon in the upper right corner. And now this is added to your list of bookmarks. Now if you tap and hold on the text, you get a highlighter. So this allows you to... Uh, do some other actions. So here you can highlight, add a note, share or look up. You can also scrub this to select other parts of the text. So if we go to look up, I'm not sure what it's going to do if we select a sentence. So it's searching for Android, a mobile robot usually with human form. So it doesn't seem to recognize what Google's definition of Android is, but you get the idea. So it's a nice tool for uh, using a dictionary. This has a built-in dictionary, by the way. Now, in terms of battery life, Barnes & Noble estimates that out of a full charge, you'll get about two months of use out of your Nook. And that's assuming that you use your Nook for half an hour each day. Now, with Glowlight, if you're using Glowlight, that shrinks down to one month. So, it looks like Glowlight, depending on how brightly you're using it, will reduce your battery life by about half. So in conclusion, I'm definitely a big fan of the new Nook Simple Touch with Glowlight technology. I think this makes it my favorite e-reader out there. Uh, the alternative, of course, is the Kindle Touch, which has a few features that the Nook doesn't have. So for example, you do have speakers and a headphone jack for MP3 playback. You have a web browser, and you have a 3G version available. You can also buy this cheaper if you buy the version with ads. Uh, so, for, for example, this was $100 with ads. Uh, this is $139 without ads. But the fact that it has that built-in light makes it a lot more useful for me. So that's a feature that's actually very useful. That's a feature I would actually seek out. So in the end, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again in the next video.